We have reached the point in our service where we, as a body of believers, celebrate the Lord's table. In a moment, there will be some men who will distribute the bread and the cup, which represent Christ, his body, and his blood that were given as a sacrifice on behalf of every believer. By way of communion, believers are given instruction to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We'll be doing that with our Bibles open this morning. If you do not have a Bible in your hands, there will be men here ready to distribute one to you. If you don't own a copy of God's Word, then you can go ahead and take this home with you and consider that a gift from us to you. The purpose of communion is not to atone for sin, as there's no inherent power in the cracker and in the juice. Communion is meant as a regular occasion for believers to meet together and remember Christ and his work on the cross. We'll be doing that from the book of Hebrews this morning. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. Please turn there with me. Hebrews 9, verses 11 through 14. The theme of the book of Hebrews is that Christ is better than anything you could go back to. And as we reach our chapter and verse, the author of this letter explains that Christ is superior to any messenger from God. He explains that his priesthood is superior to the one that came before it. And after recalling in chapter 9 the regulations for worship by the sacrificial system of the Mosaic Covenant, our author goes on to say that in contrast to what took place under that system, Christ, his sacrifice, is better than any that had been offered to God. That his sacrifice, it was a once for all sacrifice that did not need to be repeated. And that his work is a sanctifying one and it's more sanctifying, more efficacious than the system that had been in place up to that point. Let's go ahead and read our passage this morning. Hebrews 9, beginning in verse 11. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with human hands. That is to say, not of this creation. And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The only avenue to a clean conscience is salvation through the blood of Christ. Our passage gives us two reasons from that, for that from our text. The first is because, his super, because of his superlative means of obtaining it. His superlative means of obtaining it. That is, God has always made provision for man to worship him, and for 1,500 years before Christ arrived on the scene... Those provisions came in the form of the Levitical priesthood, along with all of the elements, the procedures, and the sacrifices, which played a role in mediating between God and his people. But even those sacrifices that were offered over and over again for 1,500 years were not enough to cleanse the conscience from sin. The ceremonial preparation for worship was only skin deep because the provisions for worship were only earthly and temporal. The sacrifices of animals and offerings of grain 
though they had their place, were never able to take away sin. In contrast, when Christ offered himself as a sacrifice, his provision was eternal and lasting. Whereas every animal sacrifice was offered without physical blemish, Jesus Christ offered himself without any moral blemish. He came by means of his own blood. When his sacrificial work was finished on the cross, he didn't enter a tent within a tent. As the priest did, he presented himself before the throne of God in heaven. And because he was worthy to be a once-for-all sacrifice, he would never have to repeat it again. A clean conscience only comes by the blood of Christ because, number two, the efficacy of his sacrifice is superlative. It's superlative because the blood of Christ actually cancels the ledger of sin for everyone who puts their faith in him and his work on the cross. It's impossible the text says, for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. And the only way to gain a clean conscience is to have your record of sin expunged before God. When Jesus said, it is accomplished on the cross, he said that because he had obtained eternal redemption. That is, he secured a righteous standing before God on behalf of all of those who would believe. And for that reason, we don't practice communion as a re-sacrifice or an act of penance, but as a reminder of what Christ has accomplished once for all. But communion is not for everyone. If you are here today and you know that you're not a Christian, that Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior, please let the elements pass you by and take this time to consider what it would be like to have a clean conscience and a clear slate on the last day when God judges every man. If Christ is your Lord and Savior, whether you're a member of this body or visiting with us today, we invite you to partake in the Lord's table. Men, please come and serve us. As you receive the elements, please examine your own hearts and identify any patterns of sin or offense to God that, so that you can put those patterns to death and serve the living God with a joyful heart and a clean conscience. When your hearts are ready, please go ahead and take communion on your own.